Welcome to Revealing Jesus with Christina Pereira. Are you hungry to hear more about our beautiful Savior Jesus? Well, the Bible declares that grace and peace are multiplied to us in the knowledge of Jesus. Join me for revelatory teaching, interviews with leaders in the body of Christ, and testimonies of God's goodness in your life. Thanks for joining the conversation to reveal more of Jesus to a hurting world today. I genuinely don't care what others think. Now, I, of course, I want to hear stories of impact. I love it when yeah. people love the show. Yeah. I love when their lives are changed. But when someone says, I hate it, or it's dangerous, or it's whatever, or when they say things or quote me wrongly or quote me out of context or whatever, mm -hmm. say, read my mind, which is very common these days on social media, mm -hmm. it genuinely doesn't affect me because I have gotten to that place where I want to please God and my wife. And other than that, I just can't worry about what others are saying. But before we get started, I want to give a quick shout out to our Christina Prayer Ministry sponsors who help support the mission to unite the body of Christ and fulfill the Great Commission with love. A big shout out to Gopher Ministries who provides all of our equipment for our gospel events. Davis Financial Services who does all of our financial accounting Harvest Family Network, through which I am licensed and ordained, and Life Changing Productions, who helps put together evangelistic events to reach our city for Jesus. If you or your organization are interested in becoming a CPM sponsor, you can find out more information on our website at ChristinaPereira.org. Do you have a loved one special occasion coming up? and don't know what to get them, well, now you can sponsor an episode of Revealing Jesus in their name. And you can give them a special dedication message read on air. It makes a great gift. To find out more information, just go to christinapereira.org slash podcast. Hey, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning into this week's episode of Revealing Jesus with Christina Pereira. I am your host, Christina, and I'm so excited to have you with me here today. I hope and I pray that you are doing well right where you are and enjoying the continuously flowing favor of grace pouring from our beautiful Savior and Father in heaven. I've got a great show for you today. I have an amazing person in the body of Christ with me here today. He is the creator of the Chosen series, is reaching millions of viewers all around the world and helping everyone see this relatable and beautiful Jesus that we all so know and love. I have with me here today, Dallas Jenkins. Dallas, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Christina, for having me on. I appreciate it. Of course. Thank you so much for being here with me. And thank you for The Chosen. Thank you for the amazing work that you guys are doing and helping bring to life these biblical characters that we also know and love in Scripture. I've shared with our listeners some things about you. Is there anything you can share with them, maybe something personal, just to help get to know you? Yeah. some people don't know is, you know, my dad is the author of the Left Behind books. And 25 years ago, the Left Behind books first came out. And one of the things that was really interesting about that was I got a chance to see my dad experience firsthand the kinds of things we're experiencing with The Chosen, where, mm. you know, suddenly there's more attention and more what the world would call success than ever before in a significant degree compared to the past. And when I saw how it made him not more proud, but more humble, mm -hmm. and that it actually made him even more dependent on God because of the added weight of all this, that was an extraordinary example to me. But I think another thing that isn't necessarily profound, but is personal, when I grew up, I, I had no concept of making TV shows or movies or anything like that. I was a sports freak. Like I really wanted to be a sports broadcaster. From the time I was five years old, I was reading every word of the sports page in the paper and uh, obsessed with sports. And so I think in, in season three, episode three, people saw Jesus playing a game with childhood friends, like a sport during a carnival. And a lot, a lot of people were saying, that's interesting. And I've never thought of Jesus playing a game before. And he wasn't actually very good. Does that make sense or not? That goes way back to when I was a little kid in Sunday school. I would hear Sunday school stories. I was always thinking, what was Jesus like, you know, when he wasn't in Bible verses? What was he like with his friends? What was he like 
what would he have been good at sports? And I always thought it would have been, it was really interesting to think that he probably wasn't very good at sports because he was so busy studying and praying and I didn't have, have as much time for that. So that's why we see a little bit of that on the show. Mm, I love that so much. I love that you're trying to add some context to those biblical characters and things like that. And I know the scripture, the Holy Spirit says it records, you know, those things that we need to know, but not everything is in there. One of my favorite verses says that if we were to record all the miracles Jesus did, the Bible would be massive. <laughs> well, yeah, wouldn't even well, the world couldn't contain it. Yeah, there's so many things to say. And what's interesting yeah. is that verse doesn't even just talk about miracles; it talks about just all the things he said. And I think that's part of what the show is doing: is we're definitely not claiming as fact some of the things that we're talking about, because yeah. obviously you can't know if. I mean, the Bible doesn't even say Jesus, you know, said hi to his friends. I mean, mm -hmm. there's things that. Uh, but when the gospel writers were writing, all they were trying to do was capture his greatest hits so that they could prove he was the Messiah to readers yeah. at the time who understood a lot of the context that they didn't include. You know, they mm -hmm. made certain references that if we didn't study or hear a sermon or even in our case, watch a show, you wouldn't necessarily know or understand some of the context of these Bible stories. And so that's some of what we're trying to add in what we would consider to be a plausible way, even if we know it's necessarily factual, everything that we're trying. Yeah. And I know that you have such a passion and a heart to try to make it as close to scripture as possible and to do it in such an honoring way. And I have to tell you, you know, as a host of Revealing Jesus, I had so many people come to me and say, you've got to watch The Chosen. You've got to talk to The Chosen. I'm like, OK, because <laughs> I know I love that. all things Jesus. Right. <laughs> right. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, people who are Jesus folks tend yeah. to uh, at first when you hear about The Chosen, sometimes there's skepticism. It's, oh, well, I love Jesus and I don't want to see it. I don't want to see him portrayed wrongly, or I've, you know, a lot of these projects tend to be bad or cheesy. Uh, is it going to be faithful to scripture? All of that. And then there's some people who aren't comfortable with the show, which I understand. Some people just hate it outright and are harsh about it, which they don't need to be. But other people just are genuinely, and I think that's okay, just saying, look, I don't want to know anything or imagine anything other than what's in scripture. And I understand. I just hope people understand that I'm a faithful believer in Jesus. And yeah. I, I believe it's God or it needs no, it needs no addition. Your Bible hasn't changed since the chosen came out. We're not <laughs> adding anything to scripture because we're not scripture, but everything that we do, everything that we portray is intended to be within the character and intentions of Jesus in the gospels. Yeah. I fully believe that, you know, I've watched a lot of your interviews and I've watched a lot of the chosen episodes and I can see your heart behind it. And you've had some incredible fruit come out of it. Can you tell me about that? Well, I think this is an important distinction. If we would have people watching the show and saying, this show is now my devotional time. And now I don't have to read the Bible because I'm watching this show. If people were saying that, or if they were just saying, this show makes me feel good and I like to feel good. If that was what the majority of people were saying, that would be a problem. But what we're hearing time and time and time again from millions of people and when I am recognized out in public and people come up to me, almost all of them say some form of the same thing, which is, I am reading my Bible more than ever now. I mm -hmm. am praying more than ever now. I am more engaged in my walk with God than ever. And the show isn't a replacement for anything. It's not the only reason for any of that, but it sometimes can be an open door or a jump start into taking Jesus and the disciples off of stained glass windows, down from statues, and making you realize, okay, these disciples and these followers, and even the enemies of Jesus, were humans just like we are. Mm -hmm. And that Jesus was also human and walked among us. He was also God. But the fact that he walked among us and lived the, what we lived and experienced what we experienced makes it even more beautiful that the creator of the universe chose to do that. And so what we're hearing over and over again is just people saying, even my kids, I mean, I didn't think this show was for kids. It's actually got complicated plot lines. It can be tense at times. I didn't think six, seven, eight-year-olds would even watch it. And we're hearing from parents saying, my kids as young as six, seven, and eight years old are now excited about God's word. They're excited to know Jesus more. And that's the stuff that's really the most impactful to me. Mm, I love that so much. I have a now eight-year-old. She just turned eight. But I mean, I'm a minister, like we eat, sleep and breathe with Jesus. And we always talk about him and we always weave it into our life. We live that Christian lifestyle, you know, but I'm excited to share that now with her. I'm going to do that. That's awesome. Yeah. I and mean, what's interesting is obviously an eight-year-old isn't going to understand everything that's in the show. And you've seen yeah. some of the episodes, so you know that 
There are going to be things that go over her head, other Mm -hmm. things she won't understand. But what I'm finding constantly is that either they actually understand more than we think, and I think sometimes that's God, you know, just Mm -hmm. kind of being transcendent and lifting the veil even for younger people, but also it gives you an opportunity to talk. So when they say, what's that from? Is that actually in the Bible? You can say, well, this part isn't, but this part is, and let's go into God's Word and talk about these stories. Mm -hmm. And then over and over again, you'll hear kids, when they read Bible stories, they're like, oh my gosh, that's like from the chosen. Oh, wow. And they really engages them even more. And we also do have, like we have kids' activity books. We just released recently a kid's devotional book. Um, We are hoping to give parents even more tools than they already have. Now, you obviously are already giving your daughter Jesus and and interacting with her with the Bible, but having even more things that she can enjoy and Mm -hmm. that can engage her, I think is a really cool thing. Yeah, I love that so much. You know, I mean, we have Christian books, but I think any opportunity as parents to help educate our kids in the things of God is an amazing opportunity. And I absolutely love that. Season three is out now, right? I'm not there yet. I'm still in season one. <laughs> okay, getting, you got to catch yeah, up. You got to catch I know, up. I know, I know. It was interesting to me, the theme of season three is come to me all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And it's so interesting to me because I feel like right now God is really using media to reach out into the world and meet people where they are. You know, things like the Chosen series and podcasts, and he's outside the four walls of the church right now. And for me, it's so exciting. Can you tell me about season three and what you're hoping people are going to get out of that invitation? Yeah. That's interesting. I think the month of February was, in many ways, like it was Jesus month. I mean, The Chosen came out and surprised Hollywood and theaters, even episodes seven and eight, the Asbury revival, the He Gets Us campaign, and then the Jesus Revolution movie that just came out and blew away the box office expectations. So yeah, like you said, it's going outside the four walls of the church, which is really cool. But season three specifically, you know, one of the things that we're trying to explore, so if you've seen season one or if you're working your way through season one, you're seeing that this is the gathering part. This is Jesus mm-hmm. starting his ministry, gathering some of the disciples. We don't even get to all the disciples in season one. Well, season three, all of the disciples have been gathered, and now it's time to really take the ministry to the next level and expand it out to other places. And you see the disciples go, wait a minute, we're following the Messiah. We're with him now regularly, and yet our lives still have struggles. We're still not healed of everything. I'm still struggling in my marriage. I still have questions. We're still oppressed by the Romans. Questions and struggles and doubts that we face today. Mm -hmm. And like you said, the theme of come to me, you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. We don't skip over the weary and heavy laden part in season three. Right. Oh, Uh, good. I think it's very important that even in ministries, those who believe in healings and believe in miracles and believe that. God is still working actively, which of course he is. Mm -hmm. It's important for people to go to understand that there are going to be many moments, many moments, and in fact, God promises that, that you will be experiencing a trial, that you Mm -hmm. will have to wait for God to do something, and that when he does, it might be different than what you expected or what the world considers to be happy or what the world considers to be successful. And we have to wrestle with that. And I think showing in season three, that the disciples and others wrestled with those very same things, but experienced the good news is that he does give rest. Mm -hmm. And so that's what you'll see in season three. And there's some of that in season two as well. I mean, it's in season one. We are showing you that the struggles and questions and doubts they faced are the same that we faced. And hopefully Mm -hmm. we see that the answer to those uh, then is the same as it is today. Mm -hmm. I love that so much. And I love that February has been the month of Jesus. And I really believe that we've stepped into just a new level of his outpouring, his grace. And I really believe right now he's reaching out in this hour and he's drawing people home. He's drawing the prodigals home. You know, I gave a word. It was like last year. It was like the porch lights are coming on and the prodigals are coming home. And my generation knows what that means. When the porch lights come on, you go home. And I think you're my generation. (laughs) I don't know about that. I'm 47. Oh, you look- yeah. You're a Gen Xer. Yeah. Jesus keeps me young. I know I look really young, right? I'm not 14, yeah. but I'm an elder millennial. So, <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, not quite my generation, but yeah. Yeah. I would have not have guessed you were that old. 
Yeah. Or whatever. You, but I, I hope I don't necessarily look for the 47. Although if I do, God be praised. But no, I think it's true. I think that's a good word that yeah, a lot of people are coming home. Are you a new believer in Jesus and don't know where to start? First, let me say welcome to the family of God. It's so important to anchor yourself in the gospel and the finished work of Jesus. This powerful workbook includes foundational gospel truths to anchor your heart in new covenant reality and interactive journaling prompts to begin your relationship with Jesus. This workbook includes teaching based on the Word of God. It will help you understand precisely why you need a Savior, what Jesus has done for you, your new creation life in Him, and how to have a relationship with Him. Journal through the pages to dive deep into the heart of God for you as His child and increase your faith as you learn about our beautiful Savior. Be sure to pick up a copy of New Believer Workbook, Foundational Gospel Truths to Begin Your Relationship with Christ Jesus today. Links in the show notes, or you can pick up a copy at Amazon or christinapereira.org slash store. Yeah, and I think that's amazing. And I love that God is using absolutely everything. And I know that you guys have taken a lot of criticism and heat for things. And I think anytime you decide to do anything for God, there's going to be that critical spirit. We live on what we call the loaves and fishes program, which is when the boy provided five loaves and two fish to Jesus in that great story in the Gospels. If he would have come home to his parents and said, hey, mom and dad, I fed 5,000 people today, that would have been ridiculous, even though Jesus used his loaves and fish to feed them. Obviously, Jesus did the multiply. Mm -hmm. I think we have to get on this program where we're responsible. We are responsible because he does ask us to do in miracles throughout Scripture, even as far back as the parting of the Red Sea. God still asks us to participate. He says, mm -hmm. Moses, strike the rock. He says, mm -hmm. I need food to multiply. Mm -hmm. Now, he could have just created food out of nothing, but he asks us to participate. So we are responsible for that. But the multiplication, the success or failure of something that God has actually called us to, and that when we've taken that time and delivered the loaves and fish to him, and he deems it worthy of acceptance, the transaction's over. So for me in my life, when you go on YouTube and you see dozens of videos with hundreds of thousands of views calling me a heretic or a blasphemer mm. or dangerous. But you also see many videos saying I'm the greatest thing ever and that my show is the greatest thing ever and changed mm -hmm. their life. Neither one of those things can motivate me. Yeah, The Bible describes it as a fear of man. And I used to be that way. I used to be narcissistic. I used to care about what others think of me. I used to need to be affirmed. And right now, I'm in this place where when I'm sitting at the blank page and I'm writing a season or writing an episode or when I'm a delivered episode to the world, the transaction's over once God deems it worthy of acceptance. I genuinely don't care what others think. Now, I, of course, I want to hear stories of impact. I love it when yeah. people love the show. Yeah. I love when their lives are changed. But when someone says, I hate it or it's dangerous or it's whatever, or when they say things or quote me wrongly or quote me out of context or whatever, mm -hmm. say, read my mind, which is very common these days on social media, mm -hmm. it genuinely doesn't affect me because I have gotten to that place where I want to please God and my wife. And other than that, I just can't worry about what others are saying. Yeah. And I think that's important for someone listening who maybe doesn't have a show that millions of people are watching and maybe doesn't have YouTube videos that are dedicated to, you know, bad-mouthing them. But Everyone experiences the success or failure of result. And everyone experiences mm -hmm. social media, wanting to get more likes. I mean, look what, what you do on your podcast. I'm sure that part of the way your, your success is measured is how many downloads did we get? Did we get some positive reviews? Did we get feedback? Are we growing? And all of that matters. You're trying to make a living. You have a ministry. You're trying to feed people. And so sometimes you have to measure things and whether they're working or not. But if you're motivated if that is what gets you excited or depressed mm -hmm. is based on how people are responding. That is a problem. That is the fear of man. And I struggled with it for years. And I'm sure I may, still may struggle with it at times. But if you can start to, every time you have a thought that is where you want to get affirmation from someone, you want to humble brag, you want to protect your reputation or avoid, or you want to check how many likes you're going to get on a post, if you can start replacing with scripture, 
over time, your habits start to change and you can be renewed and become a different person. And that's what happened to me. And so the criticism, you know, people have the right to say what they want, but it's just not motivates me. Mm, I love that so much. You know, I wanted you to share that because part of my ministry is encouraging others to step out and do what God has asked them to do. My mission is the Great Commission, and I encourage believers. I was a little kid. I was called into ministry, and I was a housewife when I started the ministry. You know, And it's so interesting because God uses ordinary people, just like we see in The Chosen. He's using ordinary men and women to later spread the gospel, his gospel. And it's so interesting because we need to be free from that fear of man so that we can do what he's asking us to do because I believe he's coming quickly and he's asking each one of us to pick up this cross and follow him. And it's not always going to be easy and it's not always going to be pretty. But if we trust him, just like your loaves and fishes, whatever he does with it will be what he does with it. And I know for me in the podcast, I tell myself, just talk to your 12. Talk to your 12. Oh, that's good. Yeah. And if I'm talking to them and, you know, I trust God with the rest, I try to honor people and do right by people. And I feel responsible for the guests I bring on. As long as I'm doing that, then I've done my job. Whatever else he does with it is his business. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Phil Vischer, the creator of Veggie Tales, said, where you're at in five years is none of your business. And that's not necessarily the kind of business principle you're here at a conference, I but I think it's a great plan to be on. I think so too. And I love God's plan. I love the loaves and fishes. And you know, I think he's got a way of doing things. One of my favorite songs right now is the worship mob. And it goes, he can do it like no one else can. He can do it. It's all in his hands. Yeah. And it is the absolute truth. And if we trust him, you know, we can do the same things with him. So what can our listeners expect to get out of season three that you haven't already told us? Can you give me something good? You know, I don't want to spoil too much, but season three is the season where we cover the feeding of the 5,000, the story that changed my life and that we talk about all the time. And when you see that scene, that's you know one of the biggest scenes we've ever done. And then I also mentioned in episode three, Jesus goes home to Nazareth and you see him with childhood friends. You see him, in fact, Lazarus and Mary and Martha are character that get introduced and you see that friendship. You see Jesus playing a game with friends. You see Jesus going to the synagogue and having that gospel story that we all know where Jesus informs his hometown that he's actually the Messiah and the Savior, and they try to kill him. So a lot of big things happening. And then right now, you know, we're in active preparation for season four. We start filming in a little less than a month. Wow. And so, uh, yeah, the train never stops for sure. Right. Yeah. I know all about that. <laughs> So good. Well, is there anything burning on your heart that you'd like to say directly to our listeners, Dallas? Well, I think we've covered a lot of it. I mean, I think, you know, with The Chosen, I've just learned to not only be okay with and to expect uh, what we call loaves and fishes moments or what I'm about to share with you, Red Sea moments, but we've learned mm -hmm. to embrace them. The Red Sea moments is a term my wife uses. My wife is very, very wise and even prophetic. And one of the things that she said, a couple of years ago was that so many times with the chosen over and over again, we would do everything that we could. We'd provide our loaves and fish. We'd make every possible decision and we'd be stuck just waiting for something mm -hmm. because something changed or whatever. And she would say, I think God's taking you to the edge of the Red Sea so that mm -hmm. when the waters part, you know it's him. Yeah. And that's happened over and over again. And when you look at that story in the Bible, it's mm -hmm. really interesting. God actually told Moses and the Israelites to camp out at the edge of the Red Sea. He put them in a spot where there was no escape. So when the Egyptians were chasing them down, they were in a spot that God had placed them and they were going, oh my gosh, we're about to be killed. You know what? It would have been better had we just stayed in slavery. Mm -hmm. and that's how we humans think when God puts us in a difficult position. But he does it on purpose. And sometimes we think, oh, well, God would never cause failure. Well, that may be true. Maybe failure is a strong word. God doesn't just allow trials. Sometimes God will put you there and tell you to camp out. And so that when the miracle happens, when the rock is struck and the waters part, you know that it's absolutely him. And so if you can get on that plan and be comfortable with that, it will change your life. Mm -hmm. I love that so much. And I always tell people on this podcast, I'm constantly over my head. That's where we live our life with God. When we are over our head, when our back's against the wall, where if he doesn't show up, we're just stuck. 
I mean, that's the Christian life right there, right? Absolutely. And that's what you see in the chosen. You see the disciples even saying, hey, I'm following Jesus. I'm with the Messiah. Why aren't I leading the world? Why isn't this so easy now that we're with the Savior of the universe? And Jesus right. says, yeah, I'm on a different plan than you are. <laughs> so true. And God always has He's got this way of weaving things together that even if the things that we wouldn't put in our stories, he's like, I can use this trial. I can use an experience to help you grow. And we're like, I'd rather you not put that in there. But he's like, you need it. Trust me. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Yep. We consider it joy to face trials of any kind because they produce endurance. And even in First Peter, you know, who's obviously one of the key people in our show, he wrote later in his book in First Peter, where he talked about that trials strengthen us and they bring us closer to the glory of Jesus Christ. And so you'll see these trials in the chosen. And I think we have to embrace them in our own life as well. I think so too. I think you're so right. I think we've come to just a day and an age in the church when, you know, we're really going to see the triumph of Christianity, but we're going to see struggle too. And I really believe in that. And we have to be believers that are, you know, held on that bulldog like faith where we're just not letting go of the goodness of God and who we know God really is. Absolutely. Very well said. You should have a podcast. <laughs> Good thing I do. <laughs> Would you pray for our listeners today? Dallas, I think you're more prophetic than you realize. Will you pray for them <laughs> at that red? I feel like there's a lot of believers out there right now that are at that Red Sea moment. Will you pray for them? Absolutely. God, thank you for the Red Sea moments. Thank you that you do oftentimes put us at a place where there is no getting out on our own. Mm -hmm. It's scary. It's difficult. It's frustrating. It gives us anxiety, gives us stress. And that can be crippling. And we're oftentimes going to social media and we're asking people to help. Or we're sometimes we ask for prayer, which is great. But other times we don't try to overcome it. We don't even try to surrender. We just are upset and we're anxious. And I pray that you will give us the tools to face that anxiety with scripture, replacing those thoughts, whether it's anxiety or as it was in my case narcissism or materialism or the desire for affirmation. Replace those thoughts with scripture. Give us those scriptures. Help us to pursue you more. And when we're pursuing you, even in the midst of difficulty, you don't promise you'll take us out of that difficulty. Sometimes we're actually supposed to be held there even longer. And that's so difficult for us, but I pray that you will continue to give us those tools. And thank you in advance for what you're going to do in the life of someone who's listening right now who needs to hear that trials are not something that you run away from, and they're not something that you try to burst through on your own, but that you camp out at the edge of the Red Sea and surrender. Thank you for Amen. that. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Well, Dallas, thank you so much for being here with me today. It was a pleasure and an honor. No, oh, thanks for having me on. And, and you get caught up. You got two more seasons <laughs> to watch in the near future. I'm excited. Well, I'm trying to go slow because I'm watching it with my husband. So. You know, we get our shows that we watch until we sit down together every night. Yeah, that's my wife. My wife and I are the same way. So I get it. And just to be clear, season one is available almost everywhere. Like if you go to Amazon Prime or Netflix or Peacock, you'll find it. But if you want to watch all three seasons, I think I, said, I might have said episode one, I meant season one, but all three seasons are available totally free, totally easy. The show is totally free. We don't even ask you for your email address if you don't want to. And that's on the Chosen app. So if you go on Roku, Apple TV, Fire Stick, or your mobile device, you just look up at the Chosen app and you'll see it and uh, can be watching it right now. So good. So good. Well, thank you so much for the Chosen. Thank you so much for being here with me today. And you guys go out there and check out the Chosen and grab your Bible and get to know Jesus even deeper. Thank you so much. Thanks. Well, I hope and I pray today's episode has blessed you. I will have links from today's podcast and resources in the show notes on cpnshows.com under Revealing Jesus with Christina Pereira. There you'll find additional resources to connect with us and our special guest, Dallas Jenkins. And don't forget to check out The Chosen. Until next week, may grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of Jesus. God bless. 
Thanks so much for tuning into this week's episode of Revealing Jesus with Christina Pereira. I hope today's episode has blessed you. Please subscribe, share it with your friends, and don't forget to sign up for our ministry mailing list for more encouraging content about our beautiful Savior, Jesus. Just text JESUS to 1-833-815-7778. That's 1-833-815-7778. 7778. And of course, it's your turn now to join the conversation. Send me your burning questions, leaders you would like to hear from in the body of Christ, your testimonies, and more. Just click join the conversation in the show notes. And for more information about our ministry, visit us at ChristinaPereira.org. Until next week, may grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of Jesus. God bless.